Hello and welcome to another video. Um, this is my demonstration on how to use the machine code monitor built into uh, the Epix fast load cartridge. I'm just um, doing some an example of how you would normally change memory in BASIC. Uh, you just poke the addresses. I'm not going to teach you how to use machine code. There's plenty of examples but this is just how to use the machine code monitor that comes built into the epix fast load cartridge so i'm doing a couple of changes to the font and the, the background and foreground color here um, changing them in basic obviously if you're looking at this you probably know what this is the i3280 and 81 are the foreground and background colors of the uh, the, the text editor in uh, the commerce commodore basic uh, 644 Six is the um, text color, uh, so you can change them. It changes. It doesn't change change the text color per se. It changes the cursor's color. So when you're writing it, it uh, it's the next color uh, cell to be stored. So once to get you press the exclamation mark to get into the monitor, um, and then you you can list the uh, well you can disassemble the the memory with uh, the address followed by an L. Uh, there's a converter in there that you can see there. It converts the address into decimal binary, obviously um, ASCII or PETSCII. Uh, to actually see the memory in machine code, the asterisk is what you use. Um, and you can put the address in and a colon and then it start putting in memory like I am here. So A9, if you don't know is load the accumulator immediate so what i've done there is i've loaded the accumulator with zero and 8d is the absolute store of the accumulator um, so i've stored that into 20 or do so that's 53280 um, and obviously it, when you're entering stuff directly into the computer's memory it's uh, low high so do 2.0 is the actual address, but you store it as 2.0 DO. So A9 again is loading the accumulator with the value 5, which is green. And then 8D is storing it in 8602, which is actually 286, which is also 646, which is the text color. And now I'll just put 60, which is RTS or return from subroutine. And go and there we have it where I think I've mucked it up uh, what have I done wrong um, well to get out of this um, yeah I can't see what I'm typing to get out of it you type percent so that exits back into basic um, and I'll just do a run stop restore and it's come back into basic with the right colors so let's jump back in quickly um, obviously this isn't the beginner's tool Ah, okay, so I can see there I've put 05 in um, to both the background and the text color, so I'll just quickly change that. Uh, that that address C1006 was, I've, uh, I've just changed it to 00, so now the, the font is black. So we can have a look at the, the, um, have a look at the memory now. So we're listing debugging memory. Okay, that's right now. So you can see we're changing the the back uh, the border to black, the text to black, and the the background to green, which is the five. So next, what I'll do is I'll copy that chunk of code <clears throat> using the m command. So it's the destination address, then the start address, then the ending address with an m for after it. So that's move. Well, it should be called copy but it moves it so as you can see we've copied that code across so the next thing i'll do is i'll just change this back to the default colors of the the editor uh, so e or 14 is uh, the light blue for the back or the border and the text color and six is the color for uh, the background um, 
So I'll have a look at that. And we've got the right things. So if we if we have a look at the address, that's 49168. Um, and we'll just jump there. And as you can see, the, the, tech, the cursor color has changed and the background and foreground color has changed as well. And we can go back into what we can do is we can actually save this now. So to save it, um, start and end address of so the chunk, uh, followed by the device number, which is eight and W and X or quotes for the file name. And that'll save that to disk and dollars works in here as well. Um, test one is the file. So we can just have a list of that and we can see that the code's there now. And if I, if I restart the computer cold, cold boot, like actually turning it off and on, we will come back, jump back into the assembler after loading the file. Um, for some reason, the, the way that this is written is it, it, it needs the, um, yeah, you can see there that there's nothing there. It's, this is just what the computer's got in memory when it starts up. It's different every time you do it. Um, you have to put the destination address, even though it seems to, it knows where it is. Destination address, file, uh, the device number and R for read. And then obviously the file name in quotes, quotes. It knows the end of the file. So C1000 to C1020. So if you're loading things in and you want to grab it, grab the code, it'll tell you what you're loading. Um, and you can see there it's loaded that in the file we saved. Um, and we can run that. So C1000G goes to C1000 and C1010G goes to the second segment of code, which is 49168. Uh, so we're doing the same thing in basic now. We'll have a play in basic. Um, yeah, have a test with it. Um, so this is how you go about uh, modifying things. If you're using a base, if you're doing some basic programming, you can change, make changes to memory and then jump into the machine code monitor and mess with it really without having to put anything else in or load any other programs and sit in taking up memory. So we'll just do a little screen flusher using half basic and half machine code. Um, I'll assume that you know a little bit about basic. What I'm doing here is pretty simplistic. Um, so instead of changing the color, um, I'm just jumping to that machine code routine. And what what you can see is the second byte of that is the, the location in memory where uh, we set the, the border color. So I'm going to change the border color and it, in chat then like jump into the um the program and then it'll flash so it'll change the border color 15 times and we can go back and change that by doing 49168 back to the regular color so we'll put that in the code too so 49168 jumps to the second bit of the code so let's have a look and there it is, it's pretty straightforward. And we'll use the whole eight bits. So there we get a fancy flashy screen, partially written in basic and partially in machine code. Now we could just change the, the uh, 53280 uh, directly, obviously, but this is just a, an example. Um, and we can do a few other things so I'll just put in some some text and yeah maybe I'll set the text color to um, the same as the border color now we'll just this is how you would find these things out when you're changing things so if we have a look at the memory location for where the border color or the text color it changes it's C006. Which is 49158. And we'll jump out and then we'll put a poke to 49158 in there. And we'll use Z as well.
I need to clean this keyboard. <laughs> and so we've got the uh, Hello World-esque type thing flashing with a bit of running in machine code and basic. Isn't that colour difficult to see? So we'll reset the, the colours. And now maybe we'll, we'll do a random colour. So we'll go and figure out what the address is using the, the monitor again. Jump into the monitor and have a look. I'm trying to figure it out in my head. Um, so let's have a look. Yeah, so the background address. The background address is that zero five which is B, uh, which is 49163. So you can see how handy that little tool is when you're going in and out of the and into the machine code. So we'll poke that location and then we'll put a random value in the This, you, know, you have to convert the random numbers to an integer. Now that's Commodore or basic. So between one, uh, 0 and 254. And that will change the background color every time it prints a line. <laughs> so that, that's a bit of an eyesore, isn't it? <laughs> that's the code and that's how we've we've done that um yeah i hope you enjoyed the video um i'll just let this run and i'll list where you can get one of these from uh as well as a link to the full documentation of this um at the end of this video in the description line thanks for watching